So you get it. Yeah, that's that's a good that's a good start. Yeah. So we, we start like that. <laughs> Welcome back at Oragen THE Plus in our little tourbillon world. As last time I explained a little bit about what we are doing. We were talking to Silvan. He is in holiday now. He needed holiday badly after all that work he had to do on the tourbillon. But we have Florian around and uh, we will talk to him and he shows us today about uh, what is being done on the tourbillon, on the cage, the heart of the movement itself. Um, as I said last time, we will make good progress on the overall movement. We could slim the tourbillon construction a little bit. Look and everything is the same, but we are going for three and a half hertz, as we already mentioned, which is similar to the K1. The escapement, our technology will be slightly modified to fit in the tourbillon. And overall, the movement has now 101 parts. Pretty cool number, I would say. Taipei 101. So it's the top of the line. Um, yeah, and we have really a lot of fun doing that. It's a super collaborative and creative um, project right now. And we hope that we, as projected, can have the drawings done until the end of the month. And then we are going into production with components and do pre-release of some uh, prototyping. And when everything is okay, then we go for the real thing. So let's go walk over to Florian and have a look on the turbio. So, <laughs> um, so we are sitting here at Silvan's place, but he doesn't look like Silvan. No. That's Florian, which you know from the other, uh, from our other movies. Um, he's an expert, obviously, also, and Silvan is in holiday, and Florian will show us a little bit about uh, the turbio and where we are right now. So, it's let's your go. turn. That's my turn. Thank you very much. So, yeah, the young staff <laughs> <laughs> made a very good job. They worked very hard on the, on the rapidly on this uh, new development. Um, one way to be able to go so fast in the development is uh, to work with uh, some standards components. Uh, also to, to reduce the, the develop, uh, um, development, de time, development yeah. time on the reliability tests and because we also take the function yeah. with not only the, the component, but also the function. Yeah, we can predict actually the function already. Yeah. When we do testing, then we exactly know what will come out. When mm. we modify stuff, yeah. we know that. <laughs> yes. Uh, this was leading us to, in fact, some key points. 100 hours power reserve is what you um, promised us. <laughs> yes. And I think it should be like that. It looks yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, we last time we talked about all that stuff around here, but this time we would like to talk about uh, the tourbillon cage. It is the part where we had to invest most of the time. And before that wasn't finished, Silvan was not allowed to go to holiday. <laughs> now he's on holiday, and Florida needs to continue to work. Yeah, yeah. you can see there the escapement system, silicon escapement with a very high efficiency. I can see also the balance yeah. wheel. It's uh, the one which we have in the K1 uh, K1 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 and 10 years, yeah. actually first time in the 10 years autark. We mm -hmm. use that one. Yeah. So that's a part we also know very well. Yeah, 3.5 um, hertz. 3.5 hertz yeah. is something we very well know because yeah. it's something we cultivated. So there we can, we can see that uh, we took back the balance wheel, as mm. we said before, uh, of K1s in hairspring also. Um, the, we are used now with this uh, silicon escapement. We just modify these pieces instead to have the function you can perhaps see there, yeah. it was there, no, it's going It's in, 90 degrees 90 angular. Degrees yeah. the center. We put all that on this, um, on this plate yeah. that is uh, at the outside as, uh, as uh, thin as possible because of, of the uh, That's kind the of the input. Inertia. That's kind of the input drive from the yeah. gear system. Yeah, but that's also the, the all this thing is topping yeah. and moving again yeah. every... Uh, 25,200 times per hour. Per hour, yeah. So It's called a 20.3. Yeah. That's the distance of the axles, in fact. That's, that is a number yeah. that is describing kind of this yeah. 
this distance yeah. also, but not only. Yeah. Not only, not <laughs> yeah. only. Yeah. Uh, but in this case, because of uh, the, the distance, we, we do not have enough place. We because we need to put all these components on a rotating rotating plate mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Uh, we need to make an angle between uh, these two position line and uh, the anchor and the balance wheel. Yeah. So there, with this kind of construction, it's able, it's possible to put all this stuff more condensed mm -hmm. on, on this rotating plate. The, the oscillator is beating both yeah. directions, but between each oscillation, uh, you need to start the whole cage and stop it again. Yeah. So every uh, 140 milliseconds, you use... 25,200 times, in yeah, fact. Right, right. That's a lot. Per hours. Yeah. So, so it's, you need to be very uh, light yeah. in the weight. And um, <clears throat> if you decrease the, the, the frequency, mm. you also decrease the number of time you need to accelerate. Yeah. Yeah. Another way, you need to, to move the cage for bigger uh, angle each yeah. time. So, yeah. so it's a trade-off. Yeah. It's a trade-off. I can also see that we have huh. an indicator that's new. Uh, so we yeah. decided, there was a big discussion on that. We decided yeah. to have a second indicator on one of these arms. So the, the challenge is when you want to have a chronometer uh, product you yeah. need to have a second indication somewhere somewhere <laughs> so you can put this second indication where you have a wheel with rotating at this uh, uh, yeah. second uh, pace yeah so you have the second hands there so perhaps you could use that one you uh, could use that one or you can make one uh, specific point uh, branch there yeah. um, uh, where you, you can use that to say okay when you pass through this line, yeah. uh, it's and the start of the minutes, yeah. and you can measure it. Yeah. And also the, the cusk office yeah. can measure the, the accuracy. Can you move that down again? So, and it will be filled with Super Luminova, that's our plan. Mm -hmm. Overall, we will uh, try to use as much titanium as possible. Due to the more advanced construction we were able to come up with now, it took us some revisions. We could mm. shrink actually the size, the height of the tourbillon. Mm. So it is flat with the rest of the movement. Roughly, um, not completely. Nearly, nearly, nearly flat. We need, to, we need to pass on top of this uh, uh, cage with, yeah. a, with a, uh, our hand. With, hand, with the hand. So uh, if you have a tourbillon that is very high upon the, the, this, uh, this uh, limit there, mm. <clears throat> you need to have also the, the our hands that is very high. Mm. Slimmer is always better. And it's getting more beautiful the more you remove. When yeah. you can't remove anything anymore, then you are close to perfect, perhaps. Yeah. That's right. It's a little like, bit opposite of what people believe. Taking away components is more difficult than adding them. Yeah. So we are friends of not so many components. <laughs> now we see uh, a section view through the heart of that movement, which is the whole tourbillon unit. Mm -hmm. Flying tourbillon, uh, the difficulty is that you have a lot of uh, mass that are on the top, and the, the, the points where you rot rotation points is on, on the bottom there. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a trade-off between uh, efficiency uh, friction, um, stability. Uh, stability, and all, all this stuff. After some brainstorm, we decided to, to use um, uh, the ball, ball bearing, bearing, ball yeah. bearing system. Mm. So uh, the ball bearing is fixed on, on the main plate in, mm. in the center and the outer position. So what is, uh, what is new in the tourbillon? It's yeah. uh, not so easy to say because tourbillon is a long experience in the watchmaking industry. Uh, but uh, you have, for this kind of flying tourbillon, you have a lot of uh, uh, possibilities. Bigger problem is you have the rotating point always uh, at the bottom, at the bottom mm. and a, a big, huge mass on the top. So mm. you need to have something uh, strong yeah. enough, uh, but with so small as possible um, frictions. Yeah. Huh? Um, and and we, we managed to bring down the overall height in any case. So let's say when I hit the table, you know, I'm a little bit nerdy today with two watches. 
Uh, when I hit the table with that in this way, that would actually mean that the acceleration of the upper part yeah. would go that way. Yeah. And this would result in probably if you do it in a traditional way with stones into uh, something some bending stones, like yeah, that. Yeah. So this this is the problem basically or the, the challenge in a flying tourbillon. Yeah. We said we probably could change that and we decided to go for a ball bearing. Yes. Uh, the ball bearing which is fixed in the plate. Yeah. So. Um, and it needs to be a very tightly tolerated ball bearing. Oops. And that's why that thing is also a little bit more expensive overall. Yeah. Yeah. And this ball bearing is then actually fixed with a with a screw nut in the bridge, and from the top you actually mount the cage yeah. on the rim of that bearing. So how to translate the the uh, the power from from the barrel through the gear train to the escapement system? Because uh, this escapement system is always rotating. <laughs> That's tricky, that's a turbine. Huh? <laughs> One possible uh, way to do that is to, to say, okay, we put a, a, a wheel uh, at the outside of the, of, the, of the main plate of the yeah. turbine and, and we, uh, we engage this wheel in the gear train. Yeah. And um, so it will turn and turn and turn without end. So uh, we need to, to stop this wheel, retain the wheel, And for that, we have another wheel that is uh, this mm. second part of the ball bearing. And there we engage with the uh, uh, pinion, pinion. Mm. escapement pinion. And this escapement pinion stop rotating all the, the cage. Yeah. Voilà. And each time, uh, and give a torque mm -hmm. there. So we achieve what we want to do is to have the torque Energy of the of the mainspring is going now to this um, yeah, slowly escape released through the escape wow. system, which is powered, actually activated by the balance activated. wheel. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a very smart construction. I mean, I have a bicycle background. I was dealing with bearings 15 years mm -hmm. of my life. It's tricky stuff. Um, mm -hmm. We will have probably a little bit more friction than compared when using these stones. Yep. But for sure, we have enough energy because if you have a big barrel, we have enough mm. energy to use yeah. to drive that. Yeah. But we focused more on durability <coughs> yes. and on slimming actually the construction. I mm -hmm. think that's the, the right trade-off yeah. in this case. Yeah, we that's reduce a, as, as much as yeah. possible the yeah. component to reduce number. the components. And we also make some, some designs in, uh, in the XY plane because yeah. Uh, we need to be uh, uh, balanced yeah. And yeah. also yeah. there. So, so when we do the drawing, actually we need to do it in a way that when, uh, when you measure, actually you put this on, 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 on its axle, as much as possible the weight needs to be centered mm -hmm. around the axle. Yeah. Because otherwise you have this uh, inert issue, unbalanced issue, which you will see then on the precision. You will see that <coughs> yeah, on the precision on the Or you won't altitude. see anything because yeah. we are balanced. <laughs> <laughs> But when you are unbalanced, you can see on the amplitude of the yeah. because you need to on, on one way the the balance the unbalanced cage will bring more power to the escapement. Yeah. On the other way you need to rewind yeah. the unbalanced uh, cage and uh, then you decrease the amplitude. And uh, when the amplitude is, is changing, mm. also the, the, the accuracy is also a bit changing. And that's a very difficult part because it's a very big diameter yeah. with a relatively small toothing and the roundness is super important. Yeah, but because we have some uh, tricks. Tricks. <laughs> uh, we have a chance because the tooth number is very high. Yeah. So when the tooth number is so high, it's less difficult to find a uh, very uh, nice adaptive uh, yeah. tooth shape. And we also have a simulation tooth that... Uh, you are can, the expert in that. <laughs> 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 Where you can, uh, you can uh, uh, make uh, thousands and thousands of uh, yeah. simulation to find the best... Uh, the best actually engagement. So you're looking at it in a normal position, in a compressed position and in an extended position. Yeah. And for and this... This one, I try to have the more uh, extended. extended position as possible in mm -hmm. both direction. Okay. That we can, without uh, without seeing any difference on the on the mm. torque transmission, 
uh, that this, because when, when you have tooth like that, that's standard position, but it's not com completely uh, round. You have tolerances yeah, yeah. everywhere. So sure. you are always doing, uh, when, when the tooths are yeah. rotating. Something is on, moving. On one way, mm. one axis you are so, the other axis you are so. Mm. So we need to have something that is between this position and this position. Optimum. As equal as possible. The same that's as possible. Actually the, that's the real high art of watchmaking when you are capable of calculating the gear tooth shape. Yeah. I mean, there are just a very few people in the industry who mm. really do that. You need uh, yeah. a lot of know-how, a mm. lot of calculation mm. stuff, and uh, mm. we are actually proud that we can do that. So That's, nobody knows, nobody see anything. No. <laughs> like the, the equipment there, we, we, yeah. where we increase by 30, 40 percent the efficiency of the system. Nobody see the difference. Yeah. The color, but <laughs> yeah, the color. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but that's not the color. Who made the real? But it's a geometry, yeah. And that's the same there. Yeah. Because it's super interesting. Mm -hmm. It's something where you say, mm -hmm. mm, okay, Oops. that's that's a difference. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's pretty much it.